Hi friends, uh, this is a course on risk based engineering and uh, today we are discussing as part of probabilistic risk assessment the full scope uh, component of uh, PRA and there uh, today's topic is uh, seismic probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, this is going to be an interesting session because among the external events uh, I personally feel this is this is uh, going to be in, in terms of uh, complexity also in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, even the tools and method required is going to be more interesting. I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde from Homi Bhabha National Institute and uh, at present I am uh, uh, I am a Raja Ramana Chair uh, in uh, Department of Atomic Energy. So let us start. Um, well, uh, if I have to give an outline. Uh, normally uh, in PRA uh, there are external event and there are internal event. What we are talking about is uh, now is external event. So far of, uh, fire, flood they were internal events. Uh, at least uh, that was the scope of our uh, lecture. But now this, uh, uh, this particular lecture is part of external event PRA and uh, the kind of uh, uh, state of the art which has evolved over a period of time. Um, uh, the, this methodology has become uh, very sophisticated uh, in terms of data and in terms of uh, uh, computational tool and uh, data collection techniques and then un uncertainty characterization. So uh, we see all the uh, advancement on science, I will not say all but uh, a good advancement of science can be seen in this technology uh, because this has become an important thing, uh, seismic events uh, can be uh, at times can be catastrophic also. Uh, major uh, external events um, uh, like you know uh, if we take uh, overall uh, seismic uh, uh, high winds, uh, then external flood, um, impact of external object uh, and then human induced uh, hazards. So we will not go into the detail, we will focus uh, our attention on only uh, seismic PRA, seismic probabilistic risk assessment uh, procedure. And here we will discuss the procedural steps involved into um, external hazard uh, evolution. Uh, actually uh, the major part of this exercise goes into uh, having a hazard curve and then later on uh, the strength of the plant or components and then uh, then trying to uh, see an overlap or no overlap and then try, uh, based on that we give failure uh, probability of the component and those failure probability of the component they form input to the uh, probabilistic risk assessment module and finally that generates the statement of core damage frequency. Here it will be core damage frequency due to uh, uh, fire uh, uh, seismic hazard component. So uh, let us uh, just uh, go through what are the procedural steps in seismic fire. In fact, uh, one similar diagram I had shown in uh, level 1 PRA also. It is uh, some additional module uh, but uh, more or less uh, things remain same like first we have the uh, data collection, uh, we start with the data collection information, it is related to plant as well as it is related to uh, on seismic hazard analysis and all and uh, then we have hazard characterization. Okay. Yeah, this is a very important module, a uh, lot of effort goes into doing that and then uh, we go into frequency of hazard estimation okay. and then uh, when it comes to the plant, plant walk down, uh, fragility evaluation and there, that will lead to giving initiating event. Uh, because of uh, hazard, uh, uh, seismic hazard and then identification of SSC system. When I use the word SSC it means system, structures and components. Uh, and then uncertainty, sensitivity analysis and contribution to the overall core damage frequency. Uh, because uh, these three th uh, uh, quantification thing they will uh, enable us to, uh, to prioritize, to identify and prioritize the uh, seismic uh, induced and seismic sensitive. Uh, uh, component, component so that more reinforcement, uh, more attention can be paid, redundancy can be uh, added and those kind of things and especially in uh, detecting seismic event itself uh, we can make some uh, advanced provision. If so, so wherever we found uh, strength uh, of seismic we found in the plant. Uh, okay, that is a good thing, we should be happy. But then where there are weaknesses uh, notice, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a good insight from seismic PRA to modify the uh, system and structures or it could be even organizational aspects also, it could including uh, human aspects also. So, so this is all together uh, works for external uh, event and that is, that is for uh, fire 
uh, seismic uh, analysis. Now, the major procedural ste uh, steps are like this. As you could uh, understand even from the previous slide, uh, it is the data and information collect. And then, uh, uh, having done this, the remaining effort or the major effort goes into uh, development of probabilistic uh, seismic hazard analysis. And the output of this is uh, uh, PHSA curve. So, uh, PSHA curve and then for, uh, uh, one uh, component is done that is we are seeing the hazard component there, its intensity and all and then fragility version, how strong my components, their, uh, their foundation, uh, their structural things, uh, they, um, uh, in advanced plants like nuclear plants, all the components they are mapped on uh, 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 seismic uh, level. Um, based on the re regulatory requirement, a particular seismic level is considered and based on that all the components uh, for shutdown or uh, um, shutdown or operation stage, uh, these things are uh, exercises are carried out. Uh, the key figure is peak ground acceleration that is PGA level that has to be worked out uh, for operating state, for shutdown state and finally plant has to be shut down and then um, safety, uh, safety provisions are ensured. Then uh, the last part is accident sequence evaluation and uh, next is uh, the results uh, characterization and insights whatever available they are used for safety improvement actually. So, uh, this is a uh, graphical representation of how we do. So, uh, we are uh, providing here broad features of seismic uh, PRA. The first module, uh, there are four modules or five modules are there. Uh, first module is data collection as it was mentioned and then the second mod module is um, this uh, uh, hazard analysis. So, here uh, geotech characteristic earthquake data, active fault data, these are collected and that forms input for uh, analysis of earthquake incidences and seismic ground motion that is that is called peak ground acceleration. And finally, we generate a curve, this is called hazard curve, uh, which is having um, uh, matrix of uh, occupational frequency and seismic. So, uh, ground motion is related to the occurrence frequency and this curve form the basis for this. Uh, and with this enables us entering into the uh, fragility, fragility evaluation module that is from plant side, the seismic response is character uh, and then capacity is uh, evaluated. And uh, as it happens, seismic is a uh, area where most of the components are probabilistic in nature including uh, uh, probabilistic uh, seismic hazard analysis. So, um, we have here distribution of, you can say distribution of stress that is uh, response and uh, capacity means strength uh, and overlapping area sh shows the failure probability. Uh, just to complete the procedure overlapping area has been shown. Often the margins are kept especially if we talk about the conventional deterministic approach uh, margins are meant so there is not any overlapping area. But then it is accepted fact that we have aleatory component of uncertainty, that we have epistemic component of uncertainty and that is how uh, finally taking these two together we estimate the uh, seismic ground motion and then failure probability uh, for various uh, structures, components and uh, system. Once these curves are available, then as usual in our PRA, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the seismic uh, protection measures for them, the fault tree analysis and for uh, accident sequence evaluation, event tree methodology is used. Uh, output of this is a accident sequence evaluation and finally, it uh, results into seismic core damage uh, frequency and uncertainty uh, characterization uh, along with this risk importance measure. That means, uh, uh, we got a very, very, very effective matrix for identifying and prioritizing the component uh, based on uh, seismic uh, safety analysis. And this quantified measures, uh, these measures are our prioritization has been done on quantified data and uh, uh, ranking. Uh, so that is why this is more robust and uh, you know uh, it helps us um, uh, uh, drafting our program uh, for say next 5 year, 2 years for implementation of any weakness that we want noticed and we want to work on um, um, having advantage uh, in terms of safety. So, uh, the first step, let us go into the uh, a little detail of each step. So, first step is data collection. So, this uh, deals with the data collection from the plant, the system, the foundation, uh, the elevation levels uh, and then because finally, we have to uh, estimate the uh, 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 
seismic spectra or uh, you know uh, ground motion so ground motion at various uh, ground motion and then it is translated into uh, various elevations uh, and from various elevation to the foundation to the component so uh, uh, that's how component fragility analysis has, uh, is done actually so um, then becomes easier for a given uh, pga uh, what should be, what will be the probability that this component will be available or not available this information is used uh, including its estimate uh, in the fault tree event tree analysis uh, so basically the input from probabilistic uh, risk assessment is one of the major input for even seismic analysis um, uh, after this uh, uh, probabilistic hazard analysis in probabilistic hazard analysis what we do is earthquake histories um, it could be uh, thousand year or it could be any it depends on its return period for the considered period tectonics of the region soil capacity uh, or bearing capacity of the soil or you know liquefaction coefficient and then input data ground source and ground motion mo modeling uh, is the final stage of uh, probabilistic and finally we have the uh, uh, hazard curve actually and uh, from the plant side we have to analyze uh, uh, fragility and it depends on characterization of the concrete uh, the aging components uh, also we have to factor in and foundation of the ssc alone and uh, if it is a mechanical component uh, what will be its mode of failure and for that mode of failure what are the uh, what uh, what are the response spectra that will lead to failure uh, those kind of detailed studies have to be carried out so so that's why uh, we say this is a most uh, intense exercise then we have last is um, it is quite possible that when the data is not available from the plant then data from generic source can also be collected and uh, this is a good uh, safety practice why because um, we have our own data but how far it is matured or complete uh, probably we will know when we uh, when we look at the data from uh, other sources also in fact experience of seismic psa from other sources also uh, should pa form part of uh, our uh, seismic prm modeling now let us come to the central theme that is probably six seismic hazard analysis so uh, all the effort goes into uh, drafting or developing the hazard curve um, and then major uh, for to do this major three procedural elements of psa are development of seismic hazard source model uh, i am using a new term here source model we will discuss uh, in next uh, slide what is source model uh, source model is uh, okay um, it, these are basically devices uh, and they give information uh, they first uh, induce um, seismic levels uh, or waves which are really normally generated during the actual seismic also and then they try to collect data on various thing uh, we will see in the next so and then characterization of ground motion using this uh, source uh, models uh, we do uh, Data, uh, characterization ground motion uh, model and there we take attenuation coefficient because uh, the seismic event epicenter is one place and the plant is located at one place so what kind of attenuation has been uh, has been there uh, through the earth crust and how it is approaching to the plant and uh, how uh, the intensity has come down or if it is a fault line how it got aggravated all those things are communicated and this is devices are also categorized into two parts and then last is probabilistic calculation for hazard uh, curve uh, and last is uh, estimation of or evaluation of aleatory component and epistemic component aleatory component okay it is inherent to the system uh, as a uh, as a component of randomness expression um, but epistemic component which are there in the data model or even in the uh, uh, in the real uh, weakness we, uh, of the in the plant which is uh, inducing uncertainty that can be treated so at least uh, uh, the management can uh, start working on epistemic component of uncertainty and uh, uh, to, towards consolidating the final estimate of um, cdf from uh, from seismic pra now the how setting of earthquake source model uh, how we set up the source model the setting of earthquake source model for various parameter using probabilistic approach is central to psa so again uh, psha and then source model has become central major parameter of the source models are the focal length or geometry what are what is the geometry which is there in the uh, in location of the uh, things then magnitude of earthquake what uh, magnitude 
what is its frequency and distance of the epicenter. These are the information. So in a way, we are getting from, through source model all this information and uh, this source model can be uh, of two types. Uh, specific source model or regional source model. Specific is meant for the location where we are trying to work and the regional source model they collect zone area or zone properties. So, um, so uh, just, for the, just for the sake of completeness I, I am giving here definition of uh, uh, source, uh, seismic source here. Seismic source is any device uh, that releases energy into the earth uh, in the form of seismic waves uh, and then it provides the data and this uh, uh, all the data they form sort of a matrix and uh, sort of information is available in RS and uh, the parameter of the RS could be magnitude M, location L and effective uh, uh, rate, uh, R is rate, uh, location L and M and this information like a factor uh, EN is coming to, uh, coming to us. So this is, this is what source does, it provides a ready Rockner table uh, for data collection and that this information is used for uh, seism seismic hazard modeling or attenuation. So now we have all the data available to us and now we know the distance uh, from the, uh, from the uh, epicenter. So how uh, the attenuation will, will take place uh, at the distance we are located. And uh, of course, uh, this is a function of magnitude of earth earthquake. Here it is 7.8 and uh, 6.5. So for this, uh, attenuation coefficient have been calculated and these characteristics have been drawn. And this becomes available a, as a data if we put a line for at a given distance and that the given distance uh, in our, uh, uh, our uh, exercise uh, is modeling for a seismic event for a plant. So now uh, we, we come to uh, uh, how hazard analysis is carried out. First of all, the important thing is in hazard analysis, uh, assumption of uh, log di uh, logarithmic distribution or log normal distribution uh, is, uh, is an accepted way of doing the things. And then we have n points uh, data are coming and now with this data, we want to estimate uh, for a given PG, probability of given PGA and uh, the, the mean value uh, for M uh, uh, and all the, their mean and methods and we have this formulation here. You can see it is like our normal log normal distribution. Uh, st sigma n is a standard uh, deviation 2 pi uh, peak ground uh, acceleration from, uh, from uh, integration from 0 to infinity exponential half this is, um, these are the mean values and this peak ground acceleration sigma and uh, uh, differentiated with respect to and then what we have is, uh, uh, what we have is uh, uh, preliminary hazard analysis of this thing. So let's say if we had a uh, probability distribution, distribution length PEJ, cumulative distribution, so here we have a cumulative distribution. And here it is a uh, log normal, uh, though it looks like normal, but okay, it is a log normal distribution, uh, length PJ and uh, probability of ground acceleration uh, here and we get the cumulative. So what it gets is probability of uh, PGA and uh, uh, probability of PJ uh, with respect to uh, PGA as an absolute uh, figure. And we here we try to... Um, uh, uh, see, it was done for one event down uh, uh, n event. So we multiply by rate here. We multiply by rate here. So it becomes R n is more than ln P J will give you a um, uh, overall uh, overall acceleration uh, ground P J uh, total n zero sense cumulative uh, rate of accidents. Now uh, in uh, uh, the uncertainty in uh, seismic hazard is calculated or uh, understood by accidents value. So we are trying to approach the accidents value uh, here uh, for a given peak ground acceleration and that's how we have here uh, Rn component. Now, this is a small correction, uh, it is not Rs actually, it is uh, Rn. Uh, then uh, R uh, is a function of uh, length PAJ and then uh, uh, N is equal to 1 to N and then Rn 
this is a function of again we, as we have given here and it is summation of all the n components uh, from 1 to this thing and then rate component is uh, occurrence rate component is multiplied here. So, what we get at, at the end is a seismic hazard curve uh, where we, uh, we try to show relationship between annual rate of accidents. Uh, with the peak ground acceleration and it is a very elegant curve uh, which forms the basis for uh, seismic analysis down the line and then it is useful for even um, even seismic uh, how, how, how to map it on um, fragility uh, component and all and try to understand uh, what is the risk level uh, coming from. So, the, uh, now that is why the third step is seismic fragility analysis. Uh, uh, seismic fragility analysis is done uh, in if you have to understand in short uh, what is the component's strength against a given PGA, okay, peak ground acceleration. Fragility is used uh, for conditional probability of an initiating event. For example, LOCA, loss of upside power it is. So, even for uh, given a PGA, what is the probability that LOCA will occur? because LOCA is a hardware system. Loss of offset power is an electrical system, power is coming th through some source either at the best source or in the plant, uh, how, uh, what kind of damage that occurs. So, it is a conditional probability that uh, a particular ground acceleration is there and what will be the frequency that will get modified or will, you know, so uh, like that. And then revolution of system unavailability because uh, the uh, plant configuration may not remain same. If uh, the, the, the seismic event uh, or PGA is of level uh, that you know uh, it is severity is very high then uh, and then that will give us a, another risk component from seismic. And final, uh, finally, estimation of accident sequence revolution is part of SPRA. So, uh, what finally we can see is that uh, it is always required that facility estimate should be used for SSC in seismic PRA. Okay. Uh, well, you can see how facility procedure is uh, uh, mapped. It is identification of the uh, SSC uh, over here, then uh, selection of evaluation method for capacity uh, that is uh, uh, strength of the, uh, so this is, and then response, the response spectra from seismic kind of stresses it will produce and then finally, uh, we, uh, we provide this uh, damage probability for various ground motion and this truly represents um, because for each component we have a limited state definition of failure and this goes, this information goes into the excellent sequence evaluation module. Okay. So, this is the fragility curve that we have got for a component. We have, we have given here 95 percent, 5 percent bounds over here and uh, yeah. So, uh, this is how the major element of fragility evolution procedure we have. Uh, now, uh, the objective of fragility analysis is to generate fragility curve. Role of PSHA is uh, in fragility. So, PSHA is basically giving us the stress component or you know, um, for, uh, so, so that is to be mapped on fragility. Uh, then identification of SSC, characterization of, I have uh, discussed uh, threadbare uh, these uh, points and characterizing uh, fragility, uh, two elements are there, seismic response and seismic capacity. These two together gives uh, fragility of the component or system or structure. Uh, capacity we say the mechanical parameter strength that is uh, used and response is scaling of uh, our PGA condition uh, response time and all and then limit state gives us failure criteria. Uh, why I am giving this? These are the terms which are intimately used in our uh, uh, seismic PRA. So, its meaning should be under understood. Limit state means now when we reach the stresses limit state, the component will consider it failed whether it is failed or not, but will consider it is a failed because testing will not reveal that kind of result. What constitute failure? Uh, I am trying to give a definition. For piping, it will be deformation, uh, fracture or collapse, uh, pressure boundary failure of support uh, also is a fail. Uh, for soil, it is a liquefaction uh, or slope instability constitutes the failure. 
output of fragility analysis is a result of fragility analysis form a output of data with fragility input and uh, modified uh, failure probabilities and uh, factor of safety approach for home study uh, even though um, uh, deterministic side also they have this uh, approach but uh, that is not in the scope of this but people can uh, uh, who are hearing this lecture they can uh, approach or they can uh, see uh, deterministic or traditional approach for uh, fragility analy analysis also. Step 4 is excellent sequence modeling. Uh, this is almost like once we have identified the component which are affected uh, in our simulation by fragility either failed or say, those inputs can be uh, uh, in, uh, input can be used in our normal fault tree and then we uh, see with the revised fault tree or event tree or uh, you know uh, the whole uh, system uh, can be propagated and uh, we can estimate the core damage uh, frequency. And then, um, so this is how in, uh, in uh, uh, we have seen an overview of uh, the background and introduction was there, procedural steps in we have provided major elements of SPI, the four elements, five elements we have provided, fragility evolution, how it has to be done and then integration or result in seismic PRA into PRA model, accident sequence modeling and finally uh, estimation of core damage frequency. So with this, uh, we conclude this lecture on uh, seismic probabilistic risk assessment.